Hello and thank you very much for watching. For today's video I've brought you to Hapney Green Airfield. Um, I'm going to give you a few views of the airfield and tell you a bit about the history and then uh, perhaps we'll have a walk about as well and see what else we can find. Hapney Green Airfield was originally known as RAF Bobbington and was built on land that was requisitioned from Highgate Farm in 1939. Due to delays resolving drainage issues, it didn't actually open until April of 1941. On 30th of April that year, Number 3 Air Observer and Navigation School moved there from its temporary home at RAF Cosford. They were training crews for Bomber Command using Blackburn Botha aircraft, which unfortunately turned out to be seriously underpowered and very unreliable. They also offered terrible visibility for both pilots and crew, which wasn't really ideal when you're trying to train navigators and observers. Unfortunately, many accidents occurred and they were withdrawn within only a few months and replaced with a much more reliable Avro Anson. By July of 1941, all of the Bothers had been grounded and a total of 49 of them were actually parked up around the airfield perimeter. By the end of July uh, 1941, there were 24 Ansons and 1,000 personnel based here at Tateney Green, or RAF Bobbington as it was then. By October, this number had increased to a total of 66 Ansons, 12 target tugs, don't know which type, and a few Blenheim bombers as well. In September of 1943, the airfield was renamed to RAF Halfpenny Green, or Halfpenny Green, allegedly to avoid confusion with a new US Air Force base at RAF Bovingdon. Apart from Number 3 Air Observer and Navigator School, there were a number of other units based at uh, Halfpenny, Halfpenny Green during the uh, war. And on the, uh, on, during April 1944, a new unit arrived, 1545 Beam Approach Training Flight. That was interesting. They were doing some uh, research and training on an experimental, uh, well, beam approach system, which would enable aircraft to land in uh, conditions of poor visibility. As the war came to a close, most of the units were disbanded, uh, reduced in size or moved elsewhere. Maintenance Command took over the airfield in 1946 and it became one of the many sub-sites for 25 maintenance unit whose main base was at Hartlebury. Perhaps you'll have a look at Hartlebury in the future. The maintenance unit was an aircraft equipment depot, but uh, several aircraft, including Dakotas and Horsa gliders, were known to have been scrapped at the airfield. In the 1950s, the runways were resurfaced, ready for a new training unit. This is believed to have been Number 6 Air Navigation School, who trained crews for the Korean War, again using Ansons. They were only there for a short period of around six months, though. 25 maintenance unit uh, moved out in November of 1956 and the airfield was placed under care and maintenance and just designated as a reserve airfield. In 1961, a group of aircraft enthusiasts headed up by Chief Flying Instructor H.E. Gibson managed to persuade the Air Ministry to lease it to them for uh, civilian flight training and pleasure flights and ultimately the uh, Air Ministry caved in and let them do that and hence that was the start of uh, civilian flying here at Hapney Green. Under new owners, City Hopping Limited, uh, plans were announced round about 2002 to expand the airport for commercial flights with up to half a million passengers a year. There was a lot of local opposition to it, and uh, in fact by 2006 the airfield had changed hands, and the new owners, who were MAR Properties, announced that all the plans had been dropped. Around this time, the airfield's name was changed again to Wolverhampton Business Airport. The airfield has changed hands again since then, um, in 2023, um, and I believe it is now owned by Pegasus Group. They have renamed the airport to Wolverhampton Hapney Green Airport, which is quite nice because it has a, more of a reflection on its history. 
It's great to see that uh, many of the original World War II buildings, including the control tower, are still in use. Some unfortunately have been recently demolished as they've become dangerous, which includes buildings around the cinema area. I do have some photographs of that which um, I'll put up for you as I'm talking. There were also plans to build a large number of houses on the site where they've demolished the buildings. Um, the idea behind that basically is to provide some uh, income for the airfield to uh, help with its development costs. But um, unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it, those plans also now have been withdrawn and uh, that's not going to go ahead. Now I believe that the correct term for this area, which is the opposite side of Crab Lane, was actually the domestic site. And until recent years, there were actually quite a few buildings still remaining on this side, including air raid shelters. Um, there was actually a, like a nursery here as well at one time, and you could actually have a wander around, but uh, unfortunately now it all seems to be quite private, and I think most of the buildings have gone. Uh, the building just in the background there, I think that used to be the mess hall. Uh, it's now a private residence. And I believe this big area here, I think this was the parade ground by the way. But uh, if we continue along we should probably find some more of the buildings. Now, unfortunately, the view has changed completely, um, but I do have a still photo that I'll show you and also a zoomed in version. But just in this area here, just within the airfield boundary, there used to be a Royal Observer Corps bunker. The ROC post was opened in 1965, but actually closed again now in the, uh, 1968. So it was only open for a few years. Um, around about that time a lot of them were relocated, um, I'm not sure what the circumstances were for this one um, or where it, where it was actually uh, relocated to. I know that there are others in the area, we have one at Bridge North, there was one at um, Arley, well it's really, actually, it's actually near Trimpley, it's actually called Arley but it's near Trimpley. Um, we have one at Ombersley, one at Ditton Priors, um, there are quite a few around, oh, there's even one uh, next to or very near to Russell's Hall on Bunker Hill. Uh, but that one again was broken into and vandalized so many times that uh, it, it didn't stay open for very long before that was closed and demolished. Well, this is runway 0422. And during the war years, it used to actually cross Crab Lane. The road was closed to public traffic and used just for access to the airfield. Now, not only is this runway quite short, it's also on a bit of a hill, which does make it quite exciting when you're trying to land on it. Now, believe it or not, there's actually a pillbox in there. Um, I'll try and see if I can find some photos of it somewhere uh, to show you, but uh, obviously it's got a bit overgrown since I last saw it many years ago. And there's another one somewhere else on the airfield as well. Um, not too sure where that is. Could be um, way over that way. If I find it, I'll uh, show you later, obviously. Well, there you have it. That's uh, Hankney Green Airfield. Um, very pleasant, actually. You've got a free car park, a very nice cafe if you ever fancy uh, dropping by and uh, sitting to watch some airplanes and helicopters. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe and leave me a like if you can. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.